So welcome to Awaken Your Feminine Power. My name is Sarah, and I help women really embody their feminine and masculine energies. And I'm happy to be here with you guys today and dive deeper with you. Um, and so if you're new to my world, this is an amazing um, live event because it's bringing together women that are on the a very similar path of awakening um, and embodying uh, more of their true authentic expression. And we're going to dive into that today. Uh, each one of these calls is a very organic, flows very organically based on you, based on who shows up and the energy that is exchanged here on the calls. And so I like to leave it open for lots of organic flow. And uh, we're just going to see where this one goes. So I have some, some, some things dropping in that might want to be shared. And so I'll go ahead and share those at the um, as we move along, things that were popping in um, to my um, awareness right before the call. And so we'll see how that unfolds. But I do want to preface that this is um, feminine and masculine energy is not gender specific. So this is not, you know, this is not, um, I just start with that. It's not gender specific. This is pointing to an energetic polarity that exists within us. And it's also pointing even deeper to the dualistic nature um, that we exist in, that this universe exists in, that this 3D reality that we get to play in is comprised of. And so this it's it's uh, this duality that we play in. And feminine and masculine energy is really pointing um, on a deeper level to that. And we all have feminine and masculine energy within us. And it's also at play in our experience and in our environment in, in all of creation. And so... Uh, we're going to dive deeper into that, but I'd love to know where you guys are starting out with, uh, starting out as far as your, um, how, how well you're acquainted with the concept of feminine and masculine energy. If you could throw it in the chat box, a one, if you're brand new to this topic or a 10, if you're more advanced and maybe you're teaching this to others and you're just here for, you know, just be part of the energy and share and exchange. So I'd love to know that if you could throw that in the chat box, that will really help gauge the conversation um, and the flow just based on where everybody's at. Awesome. So this is going to be really fun. So we have some people at the very beginning and then some that are an, um, an eight. So this is something that you've been diving deeper into for a while. I love that. And so I'm just going to share a little bit um, on why I'm here, how I got here, and why I'm holding this um, live event to begin with. And so there really is um, a call in the collective to, at least in my perception, a call in the collective to wake up to our inner truth. And um, when I say inner, this is, again, this is very dualistic, right? We exist in this dualistic reality. We have an inner reality and we have an external reality. We have this 3D reality that we're playing in, in this, uh, the, the world of form. And then we also have this unseen, more subtle reality, which is the essence of our beingness, which really points to, um, which is what the feminine energy really points to. So this is the yin and yang of our, of our reality, of our experience, and also of what we're going to talk about specifically today is the yin and yang energy, the feminine and masculine energy, this dualistic polarity that exists within us. And so again, not gender specific, um, but there is a call in the collective to tap into this. And if you've been drawn to this material and you've been drawn to this topic and you've been drawn to a masterclass such as this, so the energy that this kind of container, you know, emanates, then it's because there is a calling there on a to, to dive deeper into the subtle realms um, versus taking our entire reality as uh, face value 3D only, right? And so, and so my prior experience to, and I'm gonna be letting a few more women in um, as we move along. So hopefully I will stay, let's let her tune in real quick. We have another lady joining. Perfect. So you're just in time. We're just getting started. So I'd love to know in the chat box uh, where you're tuning in from and where you're at on the topic of feminine and masculine energy. If you can throw a one in the chat box, if you're just starting out on this topic or a 10, if you are um, more advanced. And I would, I would really love to know that. So throw that in the chat box and we're just going to keep moving along here. 
and there will also be a replay that goes out. Perfect. So we have someone brand new to the topic, fairly new, tuning in from the UK. I love that. So get settled. Go ahead and grab a notebook if you haven't already so you can take some notes. So uh, you didn't miss much. So we're going to just keep moving along. So part of my experience prior to this and before becoming, you know, um, a feminine embodiment coach and business mentor online and helping female entrepreneurs grow their businesses and, and really embody their feminine essence and their full authentic expression, sharing their voice and sharing their truth and, and all of that. Prior to that, I was in real estate and I was in real estate for 12 years and it was very much um, a hustle and grind for me. I loved it. It served me at a high level. At the same time, um, I was the exact opposite of embodying what we refer to as feminine, my feminine essence. And we're, we're going to dive deeper into that. And again, it's not gender specific, but um, this was, um, God, 2006 or 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, really is like the really big um, four year period where this was really, uh, this was really my experience where I was. I was in real estate. I was really burned out. I was doing everything until I was exhausted, managing clients and relationships and workload and really chasing that proverbial carrot outside of myself. So all of the success that I thought I needed. So having to look a certain way, drive a certain car, make a certain amount of money. It was all about striving. It was all about achieving and it was all about results. I had very little if any, self-care, to be honest, like zero self-care, I, I felt very, very guilty taking any time off from myself. So I, would, I was a workaholic and I wore that as a badge of honor. I was always patting myself on the back, um, even unconsciously, um, but also just consciously um, claiming I can do everything myself and just really taking on this Wonder Woman persona, this Miss Independent persona, which is really just a mask I was wearing. Um, because I had control issues, extreme control issues and a lack of trust, a lack of trust in myself, a lack of, so I, so naturally a lack of trust in others. Um, I didn't trust others could show up. I didn't trust my assistants could show up. I didn't trust, you know, this and that. So I was constantly micromanaging and trying to control everything. Um, felt guilty taking time off. Um, eventually, you know, my, my, my form of self-care was you know, numbing out to wine or Netflix or, or something like that, binging something that would make me, um, you know, numb out to, to the hustle and everything that was happening. And so, um, total lack of self-care, carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, as you could expect when you don't trust and you can't outsource and you can't trust your partner and everything like that. So carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, literally shoulder pain, literally tight tension muscles in my neck, constantly in a tensed position because of my seeing the world almost as an outside threat as well. Seeing the world and my external reality as something that I needed to overcome. Seeing my external reality as something that I needed to beat or win over or compete against. And whether that be my external factors that are playing out or whether that be the people in my experience. Um, so very competitive. Um, I was oftentimes wearing a happy face, even though I wasn't because I was really stuck in perfectionism and I wanted everybody to think everything was fine and okay, but it wasn't. So I was always masking my emotions deep down. I was, I was overwhelmed. I was burned out. I was frustrated. Um, the only relief I got was like numbing out to things like partying, um, drinking, what, like wine, Netflix and stuff like that. Um, this led to a lot of obviously nervous system and about, you know, a really stressed out nervous system, which is a key indicator. We're stuck in some of this hyper-masculine energy. Um, and that led to a lot of, obviously there was a lot of stress involved in this. And so that stress then wreaked havoc on my body, um, uh, leading to IBS and candida and food sensitivities, gut, gut, gut health imbalances, um, hormone imbalances, adrenal fatigue, you know, peer, bouts of depression, uh, weight gain, unexpected, you know, that I could not lose no matter what I did, constantly going and trying, counting calories, working out, blah, 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 trying to look perfect, but yet everything's crumbling inside. I was also, you know, in, in a, a relationship, I was engaged to someone that I, deep down, I knew I shouldn't be, I 
was not meant to marry, but yet I was going with the flow of it because that's what I thought people did. And, um, and so I realized I looked down one day though, and and realized that the ring on my finger was just another, another form of validation that I was seeking outside of myself to prove my worthiness, just like my perfectionism, just like my, you know, um, and so when I realized that it didn't even matter who I was engaged, it was just that the, it was just like, at first it was just like having that, 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 that symbol um, of that of validation was something that I desperately needed at the time because I was not finding the validation within and I was not tapped into my own worthiness. I wasn't even taking care of my own body the way I should. And I had zero boundaries around my time or my energy or my heart, healthy boundaries. So I was in a, broke off that engagement and was in a revolving door of relationships that consistently reflected back to me um, my neediness for something outside of myself to validate me and and, um, fuel this void, uh, fill this void that was really something lacking within myself. Um, At some point, I wanted to sell everything and move to Costa Rica. That was my solution just sell my house and sell everything. And um, really that was just another form of escapism. And to be honest, the only reason I didn't do it at the time, I always say is because I had dogs and my dogs grounded me and I couldn't figure out how to move them around the world. So I stayed put, right? Otherwise I really probably would have done that for sure. Um, On a deep, it was just another form of escapism though. And everything that I was taking there would have just followed me. So um, at this point in my life, I had uh, really craved ease and freedom and harmonious relationship, not only with a partner, but with myself, because I was constantly beating up on myself. I was nitpicking myself. There was so much self-criticism and self-consciousness. Um, and I craved a phys- you know, my physical well-being and a sense of intimacy, yet I was attracting partners that were incapable of having intimacy. And so I would attract people that I already knew on an unconscious level would not require me to be intimate, open, and vulnerable. So I would attract other part, I would attract partners that weren't intimate, open, or vulnerable as a way to keep me stuck in my closed off heart, which had very strong walls around it, not healthy boundaries. And there is a difference between having a wall around your heart and allowing your vulnerable, a wall around your heart and having healthy boundaries where you're still able to express your vulnerability and your truth and your emotions and um, honor those and allow um, people to enter your experience from a place of love and acceptance, um, but still have healthy discernment and still have healthy, um, you know, boundaries up. What often happens is that we intend to put up walls when the masculine is an overdrive and overcompensating for what the what is lacking within. And so this is where the masculine and feminine polarity really come into play um, with with, with, um, at least what I'm gonna be sharing today on this event. And so, so, because they point to something deeper um, that we're gonna dive into here in a second. So everything, um, what I did end up doing, right? So I didn't move to Costa Rica, but what I did end up doing was I really started to take my power back and I started to study nutrition and I healed my body naturally. I went vegan for a year. I went non-GMO, which I still am non-GMO, clean eating, you know, studied holistic nutrition, went to yoga school, got yoga certified. I did travel around the world at this point, um, having, you know, but for fun and sort of soul searching, not to a hundred percent escape, but just to get out of my environment and to soul search. And so I traveled around the world and went to yoga trainings and retreats and got certified and then eventually got certified in energy healing and things like that. And so things started to get better because I was, I was really addressing where I was misaligned. And we tend to often go, um, physical right because a lot of times and it's not the case with everybody but oftentimes we attack things on the physical level first because it's the most tangible and we tend to see the quickest results with the 3d tangible world so i can change my diet and see an instant result in my energy levels i can heal you know heal my gut quick more quickly you know like there's tangible things that i could start to do obviously meditation and energy healing so really you know attacking things on the physical level however um the way the this 
I guess you could call it spiritual awakening process happens is it, it really coming into more alignment with your own truth and your higher awareness and, and all of that um, really tends to work more in a spiral. You tend to loop back and you tend to learn some of the same things only at a deeper level. Um, and so there's like layers of the onion being peeled away. And so even though I was able to heal my body naturally and now have like excellent gut health and heal my hormones naturally and all of these things, which was a very couple of year journey to do that without taking prescriptions and things like that. Um, uh, I still saw repeating patterns in my life that were unsatisfactory. And that was, you know, certain relations, you know, especially romantic partnerships and this um, knee jerk reaction to overwork and to ignore my natural impulses of when my body needs to rest or when my body needs break, um, not really prioritizing self nurturing self care taking listening to my emotions. And there was still a high level of repressing emotions, and things like that and trying to control or fit things into a box of how I think my life should turn out or what I think I should be doing, or what I think I should achieve. So there was still this very much external um, force, uh, um, this forcing through external factors to try to achieve results, um, in order to really, um, come into alignment with what I felt would eventually make me happy, whatever form of success that was outside of myself, still the carrot proverbial carrot dangling outside of myself, just at another level. Um, so uh, there was, obviously I wasn't craving a physical well-being I had achieved that but there was still this constant seeking outside of myself for the perfect relationship to validate me for more money to validate me for um the way I looked to validate me um and still just seeking 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 and so what really started to change the game for me is something is actually releasing all of that and being able to come into alignment first inside through really embodying my feminine essence, which before I was the exact opposite of what we would refer to as your feminine essence. And we're going to talk about that because it's not gender specific again. But um, when I really started to play with the what this feminine masculine duality, this polarity within myself and recognizing in the external reality that we exist in and being able to play with this on a deeper level, and release the control and release the, you know, peel away the layers of the onion of egoic satisfaction outside of ourselves, the constant driving, striving to achieve something in order to prove some form of worthiness. And I can say things will work, things happen. And the, the universe has a mysterious way of reorganizing itself around your inner perceptions and your inner um set point of what you're perceiving and when it's actually you it's a paradox because you hear this probably in spiritual you know circles or sayings maybe you haven't but as you release and let go you actually allow more of the things that you actually desire because there's nothing wrong with needs even or desires it's the neediness or the attachment to it that is causing the suffering. And when you can soften that and release that and come into your own inner essence and your own inner worthiness and know that there is nothing outside of yourself that is actually ever going to be able to validate you on that level. And you can settle into this and surrender to life and surrender to this apparent journey that we're on or this apparent process that we're on and surrender to this that's when the things can actually flow to you when you don't need them anymore when you don't have that neediness attachment and so this really um is uh when you talk about polarities you can actually repel what it is you actually desire in your life by clinging to it by needing it by attaching to it or you can become magnetic to what it is you truly desire which is not going to be necessarily what your ego wants in order for, it's not going to be what your ego wants to validate you, but it's going to be the natural flow of you coming into creative expression and authenticity and, sh and, and allowing things to flow to you. But it's, so you become magnetic versus repelling. 
So that's what we're going to talk about today and dive deeper into is really understanding um, the feminine and masculine polarity, not gender specific, and diving deeper into how to identify if you are stuck in a toxic loop of feminine and masculine energy and how to reverse that loop uh, with the time allowed on this. We'll discuss that and there'll be plenty of time for questions um, as well. We have about 25 to 30 minutes less left up to that before I have another event to go to. But I would love to know in the chat box, or if you want to raise your hand and you have no problem coming on camera, that's fine as well. Um, does any of this resonate with you? Is any of this something that's similar, something you're either going through now or something that you, you've experienced in the past? You can go ahead and throw it in the chat box if this is resonating or if you have any comments or feedback as we move forward. So. Perfect. So I am going, and if you're tuning in, uh, just joining us now, go ahead and type in in the chat box where you're at on this topic. If you're brand new, type a one. If you're more experienced on the topic, type a 10. I'd love to know that. And so some of it from the past. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And so let's explore some of this let's just dive deeper into this feminine and masculine polarity so when we think about the feminine essence you can think of it as uh, the subtle realm like i was speaking to so this speaks to our beingness whereas the masculine will speak to the external world that we exist in the the, the level of form and this is because we live in a, a primarily dominant society, masculine dominant society that focuses on the external world. It's the easiest way for us to compare ourselves to each other and seek that validation outside of ourselves. It's very easy in a masculine dominant culture and society to look outside of ourselves and compare ourselves to each other based on what we're doing, what we're, what car we're driving, how much money we're making, um, how we look, all of these things and compare and say, okay, now I stack up. Now I'm good enough because I've achieved this. And so what we are is we're stuck in this um, loop of external validation, trying to validate our worthiness when there's a huge calling right now in the collective to go inward and really tap into something that is part of this form, but also part of you simultaneously. So while you are also this physical form, just like we have a physical reality, you're also the essence of what animates this form. Just like there's something that animates this reality. Right. And so this inner essence, this subtle realm, this beingness is what the feminine essence points to. And so uh, does anybody have any questions about that or comments? If you do, feel free to throw them in the chat box and don't forget to raise your hand if you do want, if you have no problem coming on camera. Just know that if you do, you could be on the replay or report parts of this could potentially be seen on social media if you do speak out loud. So. Let's just dive into some of the characteristics that would identify um, feminine and masculine energy. So when we talk about feminine being in the, in the inner realm and masculine being on the externalized world, you know, feminine polarity can, you know, represent intuitive intuition, your intuition, your empathicness, your empowered from within, your nurturing, your, um, it's very flowing energy. It's not constricted. It's not controlling. It's not rigid. Those would be masculine qualities. So it's very flowing. It's very intuitive. It's very, when you think of nature, nature is the ultimate sacred feminine and it's very fluid. It's in the flow. Everything's getting done in nature, but there's no striving and there's no force. It's all happening in nature very effortlessly. Nature is very fluid, right? So feminine energy is very fluid. It's very in the flow. It's very tapped into your inner world, your subtle inner essence, your um, your emotional world, your intuit. Like I said, intuition. It's very um, sensual. It's very based on your you know you know very sensual. Whereas the masculine 
polarity is going to be very externalized, right? So it's very results driven. It's very externally focused. It's very strong, but in the physical sense versus empowered from within, like the feminine, it's very giving. The feminine is very receiving, right? And so masculine is very given. It's very results oriented. It's very action oriented energy. It's the, it's the driving force. It's the, the striving and the driving. And, and it's also that courageous energy that takes action and actually puts up healthy boundaries and draws a line in the sand based on what you're available for and what you're not available for. Feminine is very rooted in your values, you know, your authentic expressions, sharing your voice, sharing your truth, oh, you know, allowing your emotions. Um, and the masculine is going to be very supportive in, in, a, in a tangible sense, very providing structure, stability, and a space for you to feel safe, um, to open up and be vulnerable. The feminine is very vulnerable, and the masculine is very powerful and strong. And so when we're going to when we talk about these two characteristics, sometimes masculine energy gets a bad rap because you, you hear this rise of feminine energy, right? The divine feminine energy or feminine, feminine essence. But when in actuality, just like the yin yang symbol, they are two sides of the same coin. They coexist. You can't have one without the other. So for example, if you have a, if you are really tapped into your feminine essence and you're really tapping into, let's say your value system, right? And you're really getting tapped into what it is you truly value. And you want to align with that. That's going to, the masculine energy is the energy that's going to take courageous action and actually draw that healthy boundary and uphold that healthy boundary, right? And so if you see a woman walk into a room that really owns her worth and speaks her truth and, and honors herself and honors her time and um, honors, you know, her energy. She has no problem saying no when she means no. She has no problem saying yes when she means yes. She unapologetically knows her worth and she makes decisions and takes actions from that place. So she has no problem telling her boss no when her boss wants her to take on a million different things that are maybe outside of the scope of her career or something like that. That's just one example, right? Or a relationship that is overstepping or telling someone, you know, no, thank you. But right now I really think I need to spend some solo time or some time in solitude, or I'm going to go do this and saying, no, there's no people pleasing. There's no over giving, right? Because remember the masculine energy is giving, but if you are coming from a toxic loop, the masculine energy will overcompensate and overgive for the void that the feminine is not tapped into that that lack of worthiness from within so this is where the cycle you can start to like um maybe apply this to your own situations and experiences and see how this applies but this is how a toxic loop between feminine and masculine energy can be formed and so and the deepest deepest level of the feminine desires to feel safe in order for the feminine to feel safe and vulnerable and open these are all, you know, and, and authentic and speak her truth and open with her heart and in touch with her emotions and sharing from her emotions and things like that from a healthy place. She needs to feel safe in order for her to feel safe. The masculine has to create safe space. And this is your masculine that needs to create safe space, not another, not like necessarily a man in your life. However, this is a reflection and so when you create space for yourself and you have that strong masculine, sacred masculine energy that holds your boundaries and holds your value and creates that space for you to feel safe and vulnerable, you know, um, creates space for self-nurturing and, uh, and takes actions that are in alignment with your values and things like that. This is when the relationship dynamic that's in your external world will also start to replace, uh, reflect that as well. But if you do what I did, which was make the mistake of trying to put that power in somebody else's hands, whether that be a relationship or, or anybody, it could be a career or a romantic partnership, then what you're doing is you're putting that power in somebody else's hands instead of 
inner alignment and union with your own feminine and masculine energies first and foremost. And so that's just another form of seeking, seeking safety, security, validation, or approval outside of yourself. This is the root of the needy wounded feminine energy, seeking any kind of safety, security, validation, or approval outside of yourself. And so it's about that, that will lead to the toxic loop, right? And so is any of this resonating or making sense? And we'll talk on how to flip the script on that to come into a more aligned loop with your inner divine feminine energy and sacred masculine. So it's not in a toxic uh, loop, but just um, is this making sense? The masculine energy will go into overdrive. So when you think of the, the characters, uh, the, the, not the characters, but the qualities of masculine energy being giving and being... Um, providing structures, providing stability, or providing or seeking results, you know, action oriented, and seeking, um, uh, you know, powerful, you know, protection, the masculine is all about protection. So when that masculine energy is an overdrive, you get overprotection. This is where the walls come up around the heart instead of a healthy boundary, or you get overgiving. This is when you're giving at the expense of your own, um, at the at the expense of your own energy, right? So you're giving from an empty cup. You're self-sacrificing, and so, or your your actions, right, can become overly aggressive instead of just taking strong action, courageous action. They can be overcompensating actions, and this is because we're not resting in our feminine essence, which truly knows her worth, truly understands her values and has healthy boundaries, speaks her truth, you know, shines in her authentic expression, whatever that is unapologetically and is in tuned in and tapped into her intuition and her emotions and honors that and create and honors that. So when you're honoring your values and and self-nurturing, let's say, it's the masculine that's gonna create space for you to do that, right? It's the masculine that's gonna say no to an event that you were supposed to go to that you didn't really wanna go to, but you're just going anyways because you need to please somebody um, because someone else expects you to go. But ultimately what you really wanna do is spend some time by yourself, right? So it's the masculine energy that's gonna take action on that and say no so that you can come in to more embodiment and then tuned in and tapped in and just honoring what your intuition is asking for right and so this is just an example on how these two energies work in tandem with each other because they are literally two sides of the same coin they can't coexist without each other or they can't exist without each other they coexist is this making sense and so the masculine energy is also very logical and analytical and in the mind where the feminine is very tapped into her intuition and her senses and empathic and tapped into her heart space. And so there are gender males, men, that are also opening up to this energy. So this is not gender specific. This is happening in females and males. I just happen to host master class for women because that's who I resonate with because I am a woman in this reality. And so that's who I resonate with. But this is happening and I see this happening in all gender, you know, both genders. So this is not gender specific. Everybody has feminine and masculine energy within us. And it actually is part of um, our 3D world as well, which brings me to this other point. I just wanted to touch on, and then I wanted to see if anybody has any questions. So feel free to post your questions in the chat box if, or raise your hand if you have any. Um, but when we think of nature, the other thing and this is where if you've heard of, some of you are a little bit more advanced, so maybe you've heard of the dark feminine energy. So we're going to touch on that here just for a second, because that often sounds like bad, quote unquote, bad or evil. But the dark feminine is not at all. It's actually part of your transformative process and your alchemical process. When you look out in nature, you can... If you really just take it in, you can see that everything is happening naturally and in the flow. And you could walk by and see a dead tree, right? A dead stump of a tree with beautiful flowers growing up next to it. And you'll start to just tune in and notice the cycles of like death and rebirth and renewal. 
And the same transforming transformative process that is totally interdependent, just like nature is interdependent, just like we are all interdependent on each other and nature. There's a cycle of death and rebirth that is happening within the collective as well. So the problem with that is, and it's not a problem, but it is something that the ego sees as a problem because the ego wants to cling to, um, you know, the ego is wants to protect you and your mind and your thoughts and, and your, your own, you know, survival mechanisms want to protect you and avoid pain and go towards pleasure. Right. But this transformational process that exists in all in the, our entire reality, when you see it in nature, the death and rebirth process, the cycle of life is happening, not only in nature, but within ourselves as well. And so when we speak about this, um, uh, death and rebirth cycle, this transform transformational cycle, this alchemical cycle. Um, this is often what is referred to as the dark feminine in, in, in addition to looking at the shadows, right? Um, the shadows are the parts of ourselves that we don't want to look at or the parts of ourselves that we hold in the subconscious or the parts of ourselves that just we suppress because they don't feel good. But in actuality, life accepts everything, right? Including the death and rebirth process, right? So this transformative cycle, when we, when we, when, as a human, when we look out and we see something that is crumbling um, or dying, we think that that's a bad thing when it's actually a renewal and it's actually a birthing of an, a renewal, a rebirth. And that's what's happening internally with so many that are going through this process. There is a rebirth happening. And what does that mean? just like nature is a metaphor for this that means there's a death of the old and this is where the term ego death comes in there's a death of the old in order for there to be a rebirth and a rising so to speak right just like the phoenix rising from the ashes but the ego will want and our mind will want to cling to the good and um uh, reject the quote-unquote bad when in actuality, they are also two sides of the same coin. And you can't have one without the other. Nature shows us that. You can't have a rebirth without the death process. Everything is a cycle. Everything is um, ebbing and flowing. Everything is coexisting. And if we reject these aspects within ourselves, the parts that want to fall away, the parts that are no longer in alignment, the, the parts that we're shamed, holding shame or anger or resentment around and we're denying those those and we're not shining the light on those to allow those to be that's often referred to as the shadow and this is part of the transformational alchemical process that actually allows the rebirth to happen but if we're suppressing and we're repressing or we're avoiding or we're rejecting these aspects of life that are unavoidable then what we do is we find ourselves in an internal turmoil, like a gridlock. And this is where the suffering really kicks up because, and this is where, you know, the phrase dark night of the soul or ego death comes into play. This is part of the transformational process, but the inner alchemy that's taking place. When I say transformation, we're talking about an inner alchemy or rebirthing that's happening and able to come into alignment with what it is you truly desire or value means that everything that's not in alignment with what you truly desire and value needs to die or fall away. And this could be belief systems, this could be people, this could be careers, this could be um, situations or circumstances, whatever the case may be. Um, there's a letting go or releasing or surrendering and a falling away and a death literally of the old in order for the new to um, rise up. And so this process can get really uncomfortable, especially if you're, the more you're rejecting it, the more you're resisting it, the more you're resisting change, the more you're resisting the unfamiliar, the more you're resisting the unknown. So remember the feminine, the feminine is in the, is in the flow of life. The feminine is fluid. The feminine in us, the essence within us is not attached anything having to be a certain way just like nature there's just it's just happening and you're 
moving with it. You're moving with the river of life. You're not swimming up current, right? You're going with the flow of life. You're allowing, you're receiving, you're allowing the emotions to surface instead of suppressing. You're allowing those shadow parts to rise in order to literally, re they'll release their power over you when you do this, because when you shine the light of awareness on what used to be a shadow, it's no longer scary. It's just what is and it, it allows it to integrate into and instead instead of being stuck it, the more it stays in your shadow the more power it has so is this making sense and we just covered a lot between like the the toxic cycle the, the you know feminine masculine energy and how it's not gender you know gender specific we just tapping just on the very tipping point of of learning some of this and being able to integrate it but and I wanted to touch on the dark feminine here as well, because a lot of women that um, show up to this event are going through a transformational cycle, uh, going through an alchemical process, going through an inner alchemy. And they're being faced with decisions in their reality that are going to align them with their more authentic expression, but they're not easy to navigate, right? And so recognizing that. Um, that this polarity is at play is part of being able to take your power back, being able to flip the script on the toxic cycle and come into alignment with a harmonious loop of feminine and masculine energy so you can stop looping. That's key is being able to identify and then be able to shift from that place. And what happens is, is that when you shift internally and you come in more to alignment with what it is you truly value, um, the decisions will populate in your external world. You'll be faced to go up against your fears. You'll be faced to go up against, oh, well, I just said I honor my time and I honor my energy. And now so-and-so is asking for more of my time and I don't want to give it. So now I have to say no to this in order to stay in alignment with my truth, the only reason I would say yes to this is if I was people pleasing or, or putting somebody else's, um, somebody else's, um, somebody else's situation above my own. And this isn't being selfish. This is about coming into, I mean, you can say it's being selfish technically, I guess, because it is coming into putting yourself first. And sometimes people are doing this for the very, very first time. But ultimately, when you're able to do that, then you're able to show up in the most aligned way with your integrity and your energy intact and your self-worth intact, right? So you'll be positioned in the external world to make decisions that, that go up against the grain with your resistance and your fear of not being loved or approved or accepted or validated. And so you're going to come up against your people pleasing. You're going to come up against your overgiving. You're going to come up against your um, uh, saying yes when you really mean no. And you're going to be coming up against these kind of actions to take, masculine aligned action to take in order to fully empower from within the feminine essence that is coming into alignment with your true values, your intuition, your your flow and your authentic expression. Is that making sense? Um, so I just wanted to open this up for, we have about three to four minutes left. I just wanted to see if anybody has any questions or comments. I'm gonna review the chat box here for a second and feel free to raise your hand or come off uh, mute if you wanted to share. Let me go ahead and see, yes, this, this is resonating, yes, it's resonating. Yeah. Yeah, and so when you say that, I love that comment, this type of work is very rewarding and can leave one very clear-minded. Remember, we're primarily, most people on the planet are very stuck in their mind and the thoughts control their entire experience. Recognizing, I don't know why that's ringing. It should be on vibrate. Um, where was I? Where was I? <laughs> Someone give me a clue. Someone throw me a hint in the chat box. What was I saying? I'm happy to hear this is resonating. So, um, yeah, I can't remember what I was saying. I just lost it. It'll come back to me. Half, this of, the planet, half of the planet is stuck in their head or where they oh, are. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, got it. Thank that, you. Thank that, you. That's my version. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So the, remember the mask, we live in a masculine dominant culture. And one of the characteristics of the masculine energy is very analytical and very logical and very much in the mind where the feminine essence that we're being called to embody is very much in her intuition and her empathicness and her senses. And so one clear, um, and, and the, and the feminine is very tuned in and tapped in and opened, you know, when your line opened in your heart space, one of the clear tells for me when I am moving out of my embodied feminine essence is when I am overly analytical, overly thinking and trapped in the mind. But most of society is also, um, uh, program from very early age, like we all are, that we are, the mind is us, that the mind is who we are, that the thoughts drive our, drive us, right? But these are just thoughts and the mind is just the mind. It has nothing to do with your inner essence. Um, some of you may have had mystical experiences around this where you've got to experience, you know, the, the, the different, um, you know, recognize that you're not your mind. I, I'm just bringing this up because I had just had a memory of when I had a, um, an out of body experience and my body started to write, I, my awareness started to rise up out of my body and I could still witness the mind going. And this was after doing lots of yoga nidra and meditation and, and whatnot, but I had this mystical experience where um, my body, my awareness rose up and I could see my body laying there in meditation and the mind was going, but I was not the mind and I was not the body and witnessing those. And so we get so trapped in our mind that we, it literally runs the show. Most people are a slave to their mind thinking that they, that's it, that they are their mind. But in actuality, if you actually looked at what your mind was saying to you today, most people, it's, it's an enemy to them. It speaks very badly to them. And it usually keeps you in constant loops of evaluating the past and the future. The mind is trapped in duality. So you're, it's constantly going back from past into future, trying to avoid mistakes of the past, trying to project into the future. The one thing the mind doesn't want to do is be present. The feminine essence is all about presence being present with what is, including what is that is considered bad, which could be an emotion, right? That is considered quote unquote bad or feeling or whatever, just a circumstance. And so what we have is, a bunch, is we reject the, the quote unquote bad. And so we're not able to stay present with what is. We can't appreciate life for what it is and how it's unfolding because over there, something unfavorable is happening or over here, something just happened unfavorable. When we look at nature, that's happening all the time. There's things happening that are favorable and unfavorable, right? There's tornadoes. You could see that as an unfavorable event or you could, is it an unfavorable event or is it just nature happening? Right. And so when we can come into a place of recognizing that the mind is going to tell us a bunch of lies for the most part and really feed off of your insecurities, really feed off of your self consciousness and really feed off of you know, the mind is constantly in a threat prevention because and, and it sees everything as good or bad. It's trapped in duality. Guess what's not trapped in duality? The essence of who you are. There is no opposite to the essence of who you are. So this is about the duality, but in the 3D world, which our mind is trapped in seeing everything as past and future and trying to avoid or cling to something, where in the truth of who you truly are, the essence of your beingness, the essence, the life force energy that animates this body, there is no opposite. And so being able to sit in that and come into Sets the wrong word. Awareness is the wrong word because, but that's the closest word I can think of coming into uh, beingness, beingness, tapping into that, tapping into presence, tapping into beingness, tapping into the part that is beyond the mind. The mind is going to tell you stories. The mind is going to give you, tell you lies. And the mind is going to give you um, a, 
uh, hamster wheel of things to be doing in order to avoid X and attain Y. And this is the carrot again on the hamster wheel, keeping you chasing, chasing, chasing. Guess what doesn't care to chase because it's already so complete and whole within the essence of who you truly are, the beingness, which is what the feminine energy is pointing to. It's pointing inward to your subtle realm. You can't see, you can't taste, you can't touch it, but we are trapped in a mas masculine dominant culture that uses external validation to show that worthiness when the worthiness and is, is already innately who we are. We are this beingness. There is nothing else that needs to occur for this to be whole and complete, but we continuously seek it outside of ourselves like a little carrot on a hamster wheel, sometimes for our whole life. And, you know, you can you could be on your deathbed and still, and then finally realize like, oh, that's not what this was about. That's not what this was about at all. <laughs> that's not what any of this was about. I missed, I missed that. I missed that point. It's about being alive. It's about feeling. It's about experiencing. It's about all of it, the quote unquote good and the quote unquote bad. It's about rejecting nothing and allowing yourself to live in the flow, not being constricted in this little ego self, this little ego mind, very constricted energy, trying to fight, 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 seek, 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 repel, 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 reject, 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 and just trying to control and hold on to and cling to and desperately need this thing over here so I can finally feel better. Can you see how dense that feels and how energetically restricted that feels and how constricted that feels that it just it's the opposite of freedom it's the opposite of of fluidity it's the opposite of flow and when a really funny thing happens when you can rest in your sorrow or rest in your in your grief or your sadness or your pain or your loss or the things that we reject in life and you can rest in it with a resonance of like an uh, uh there's a beauty within it when you can fully rest in it instead of run from it and come into wholeness wholeness meaning all sides of the spectrum all duality it's everything it's good and the bad and when you can rest in that there's a, there's a peace and a, and a, and a um uh beauty is all i can say even in the struggle, even in the conflict, even in the resistance, even in the pain, and even in the suffering. Life is this very, at least, I don't want to project this, but the more I embody this, the more it is a very beautiful story that's unfolding that has these, and you get to experience it all. You get to experience it all, and everything becomes so um, beautiful, even the things that you used to think were so, um, so painful. And it's not saying that they're still not painful, but there's a, there's a serenity or some peacefulness or surrender or beauty in it. I don't know what word to put on it, but I hope that's making sense. Um, and resonating, if it's resonates, uh, then it resonates. And if it doesn't resonate, then it's not for you. Um, but I hope this uh, masterclass or live event here, um, you got value from it uh, if you did and i'd love to hear any feedback i will be sending out the replay i do have another um another event i'm jumping on right now at 11 so i do want to i do have to wrap this up but i want to email out the replay so if you attended live you're going to get a copy of that and you're also going to get information on the divine femme membership which is opening up soon and keep an eye out for that. It's if you want to dive deeper and you want to be in this kind of exchange um, on a regular basis, um, then that's what the Divine Femme membership will be. And I'm going to be dropping details for that soon. So keep an eye on your inbox. And thank you, ladies, for tuning in. It was a pleasure to be with you today. And hopefully I will see you again soon. Oh, let me see here. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well, I will hopefully see you guys soon. Namaste.